We'll now move on to our final presentation in this, in this section, which is from Martin Glover um, from the City of Gosnells, and he is the Director of Infrastructure there. And he's going to talk about a really interesting project at Robinson Park, where Council um, took some underutilised park area, um, subdivided it, and it is now a really lively, um, engaging, interactive place with a beautiful uh, park, well-maintained, well-designed park in the middle. And, and the area that's been developed around it is, is a really nice um, neighbourhood, conducive to um, a sense of place and connection. Um, so it's a great development and um, really looking forward to hearing about it. And Martin has a, a long and distinguished career over 40 years um, in public works engineering, um, predominantly in civil engineering, asset management and waste services. He's an emeritus member of the WA division of the Institute of Public Works Engineering Australia, a member of Engineers Australia, Stormwater Western Australia and Local Government Professionals WA. And just a reminder before I hand over to Martin that he will be um, staying on after his presentation and joining Caroline and Michael for a panel uh, discussion. So please do um, add in your comments or questions to the chat and we'll include them uh, afterwards. So now I'll hand over to Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, everyone can hear me clearly. I'll just uh, share my screen. Uh, Excellent. Okay, right. we're ready to go. So uh, good afternoon to everybody um, and the rest of Australia and, and good morning to anybody who's coming in from WA. Um, my presentation today is on Robinson Park from dry land to dwellings. And this is one of the residential projects that the uh, City of Gosnells has uh, provided as part of its uh, development portfolio. Uh, we as a city, um, our cash cow, if you like, is um, development and we have uh, hundreds of hectares of freehold land uh, that we own and we are able to develop for both uh, residential and commercial um, developments. So I'll just get stuck into it. I will. Yep. So um, we'll be looking at the journey of Robinson Park, um, key facts, how to convert uh, underutilised space into a subdivision, um, some of the awards that this has won and the impact, most importantly, the impact on the community and the local housing market. So City of Gosnell's project managed the subdivision. This is, we have our own project management team that does that. Um, and it was originally an underutilised dry park um, and a night soil site, so a contaminated site, um, 5.4 hectares in size and we were looking to provide a neighbourhood park to not only support the subdivision, but also the uh, immediate area of uh, Southern Gosnells uh, in terms of a neighbourhood park. Uh, let's have a look at the location here. You can see on screen, um, Robinson Park is in the southern part of Gosnells, uh, very close to Arterial Road Network, Tonkin Highway, uh, Caulfield Street, um, school shopping centres and and all these services in close proximity, um, but really no uh, high quality parkland within that space. Um, also quite old in terms of the, uh, the uh, housing in that area. So we were actually looking to actually set up a, uh, an example of how this part of Southern Gosnells could be redeveloped over time. So a little bit of a uh, screen here showing you what it looked like before. Um, and you can see that's a dry park, lots of mature trees. And then um, as it converted into what it looked like just prior to the houses being um, developed, uh, but post the subdivision development. And back again. So some aerial photos here, um, uh, looking before, um, during construction, completed of the subdivision construction, and then um, pretty well when most of the houses have been built. Um, unfortunately, they're all photo here. We just mowed the park, um, so it wasn't its usual beautiful emerald green, um, but um, gives you some indication of uh, from go to woe on the project. 
Now, um, within the park, there's a all abilities play space um, and barbecue facilities. Um, the building to the right hand side is um, uh, basically a toilet block and an iron filter, which I'll provide a little bit more explanation. Um, some of the things that we did a little differently on this side is we provided a lot of um, information signage on um, uh, the different elements of the project. Uh, this was a pipeless subdivision, so water sense of urban design, and um, we provided some explanation to anybody who was uh, visiting the park on, on what this actually entailed. Key facts, um, 42 lot subdivision, high quality public open space, pipeless drainage. Um, it's on Caulfield Street in the south of Gosnells. Uh, the objective was to optimise the city's assets and provide quality development opportunities for our residents. Project costs, just a little over 6.2 million. Um, it was uh, initially identified in the 2011 strategic plan of the city. Um, and the potential for the use of uh, an otherwise um, unused asset. Uh, initially rezoned in 2014, commissioned in 2020, um, final lot sold in 22. Um, we uh, had a uh, board of consultants who assisted through the process and RJ Vincent Co. were the construction company. Um, lots of key stakeholders you can see on screen. Um, and we had a net profit in the project 1.8 million, um, which we then transfer into our local open strategy reserve, which we use for future works elsewhere in the city. Um, great public opening event we had when it was originally opened with over 400 local residents there for um, barbecue and um, a bit of fun and games uh, with our locals. So um, originally 5.6 hectares. Um, one of the things we had on this site was a, a lot of large trees. Um, some concern about whether those trees would uh, survive the process, um, but the design we put together uh, was to retain as much of these mature trees as we could. We also have very high groundwater. We have uh, groundwater with, uh, less than two metres below the ground there. Um, risk of inundation in winter. Um, very small catchment, uh, this particular catchment, which feeds into the Mary Carroll Park water body. Um, we made a decision to actually uh, not fill um, the area of the parkland, which meant that we would have some inundation through the winter months. Um, but that was to ensure we didn't lose any of our mature trees in that process. Um, community is well aware of that. Um, it's probably the only place I've got in the city where I have casual water through the winter, but don't receive any complaints. Uh, just uh, now moving on, so March 2019, subdivision approval um, for the creation of the 42 lots and one public open space uh, was granted by the WA Planning Commission. And despite the challenges of COVID-19, the lots were listed for sale in September 2020. Um, the, uh, by subdividing part of the park into residential housing, we're able to use these proceeds, obviously, for to develop a park to a very high level of presentation. So this is the green space as as completed, um, and obviously it was very attractive for the new home buyers, um, being a park dissimilar to anything else that we had in this part of Gosnells at the time, and having so much amenity. Um, it's won lots of awards. We're very proud of, of the project um, in terms of uh, the Institute of Public Works, which I'm a member. Um, we won several awards um, last year uh, the, for the size of the project, um, its innovation, um, and also its response to environment and sustainability. Uh, we won the design award from the Stormwater WA, uh, and also we were finalist in the uh, UDIA Excellence in Social and Community Infrastructure Awards. Um, so really, very proud of that project. Um, in terms of community, um, we were, did significant uh, consultation with the community on this project um, before we even got into the design process and through the design process. And then when it came down to um, uh, preparation for construction, and these are some of the uh, resources we used to do that. Um, lots of face-to-face -face meetings. We had a constant page running on our USA Gosnells platform. Um, for people to communicate and we regularly were meeting with uh, community on site um, to explain all the different things that were going on. 
Um, as you can see from this photo, in terms of the community benefits and assets, um, the beautiful mature trees that were retained, and you can see quite an undulating site, um, uh, but we were able to design around the trees to make sure those trees not only um, were going to be kept, but also would be kept in very good condition uh, into the future. On the right-hand side is actually a iron filter uh, building. So inside this is an iron filter. We have a lot of problems with iron in our groundwater. This, um, if left in the groundwater, um, will affect um, both the uh, trees and the uh, turf over time and causing uh, clogging issues and inability for water to penetrate. Um, so we actually are removing that um, for this facility, um, one of the larger ones we've got across the city. So um, in the West Australian, uh, a different uh, type of development that we're putting, very much a boutique estate, um, embraced, I suppose, an enviable family lifestyle for uh, the people that it would have had previously resided in that part of Gosnells. In terms of the price range, um, people over east would be really happy to get blocks at 191000 to 229000 which was the range we sold them at, so these are the 400 square metre lots on average, and they proved extremely attractive. Um, we sold half of them within the first few weeks, and uh, it took two years until the last one was sold, but uh, um, really happy with the way that the, the blocks came over. So some of the benefits there, you can see um, 2.9 hectares of public open space, all abilities playground, an off-leash dog exercise area, basketball half court, multi-sports goals, shady picnic areas and barbecue facilities. Um, and of course, we were uh, also dealing with the site being pre previously contaminated with night soil and asbestos. Uh, so we're very, uh, very pleased with how we managed to clean up that site to provide this development. So some of the houses getting built here um, during the construction phase, um, pretty well all built now. Um, very much appealed to um, second home buyers. So a lot of the buyers were uh, residents in the city of Gosnells who were looking for their second home. Um, young families, a lot of young people wanted to take advantage of the parkland that was provided. Um, and um, it's uh, proven very, very popular, uh, but not only just for this immediate community, but also for the greater community who now has this facility within 400 metres walking distance. Um, there's access both from the front of the development and also from either side uh, into the subdivisions behind, uh, which means there's a, a terrific facility for them to use. Um, a great benefit of the city, uh, we've um, provided this development, new homes uh, for residents within the city, obviously increasing our rate base, but uh, also um, as far as the rest of the community is concerned, they have a, a park that wasn't there before with an amenity level that they didn't have before. And in terms of um, this part of the city, we think we've made a, a difference and I think uh, set the standard for the rest of the redevelopment of that area. Thank you very much. Thanks, Martin. That was great. And a really creative way that City of Gosnells has uh, responded to uh, prov the provision of affordable housing. And I love, um, when I was there in August, you know, I love the, the attitude that a lot of WA councils have, which is as developer and I'll be interested to see in the comments if people let me know if um, councils in other states are, are taking that role as well.